Today on The Grave Talks, the ghosts of the Copper Queen Hotel, a conversation with Jenna Lampinen. In 1902, the Copper Queen Hotel opened its doors in Bisbee, Arizona, and was heralded as the epitome of modern hospitality in the West. Erected during a time when Bisbee boasted its status as the largest urban center between St. Louis and San Francisco, the hotel not only mirrored the prosperity of the local mining industry, but also underscored the dominance of rail transportation at the cusp of the 20th century. Today, the Copper Queen Hotel stands as Arizona's oldest continuously operational hotel and has welcomed many notable figures within its walls. Among its esteemed guests have been luminaries like John Wayne, Marlon Brando, and Harry Houdini. Yet, these renowned names may not hold the most enduring legacy, as it appears that some visitors have lingered far beyond their intended stays. Among the spectral inhabitants are the ghosts of Julia Lowell, a young boy known as Billy, and an enigmatic figure often referred to as the Smoking Man. Today on The Grave Talks, the ghostly guests of the Copper Queen Hotel, a conversation with Jenna Lampinen. Okay, so Jenna, let's talk real quick about what you do at the hotel, because you do a little bit of everything at the Copper Queen. Yes. So I, I really go where I'm needed, honestly. Um, you know, I would say I'm the COO. I oversee all the other managers and other departments and make sure everyone's taken care of. Um, and I also do HR groups such as, you know, just any kind of group or weddings, um, and then events. So planning and itineraries and event planning and whatnot. So we can all assume that you keep quite busy at the hotel. (laughs) Absolutely. But I'm passionate about what I do. So it helps. So it looks more Italian, more Mediterranean. You know, I wasn't really expecting that when I looked at all the pictures of it, but it's really a stunning hotel. And it was built like they started building it in the Late 1800s? Yes. Completed in 1902. And I was reading the architectural firm. I found a story on them, and it said that hotel was originally built for $100,000, which was a lot of money. (laughs) That back then was a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It had more rooms at the beginning, didn't it? Yes, so it did have more rooms, and it only had uh, one shared bathroom on each floor. And later on, they it ended up being less rooms, but each room has a private bathroom now. Yeah, because that not having a private bath at a hotel just doesn't go over too well these days. No. <laughs> yeah. When it was There's built. Only, uh, there is one shared bathroom still on the third floor. It's just like a staff bathroom now. Because back then, you know, that was just kind of what they did. They did not have private bathrooms. And most hotels weren't built with private bathrooms. The style, this kind of Italian-looking, Mediterranean-looking building, was there kind of, were they just looking for something kind of different? Did they want something kind of a certain feel to it? You know, actually, I don't know. That's a very good question. Um It might be intentional because, and now don't quote me on this because I don't know for sure, but I do know that the tile in our lobby is, um, and that used to be carpeted and we've, uh, you know, completely taken the carpet away and that's the original tile floor there. And those tiles are very small coin shaped kind of tile that was hand laid and uh, the, the tile is from Italy. So they were really going for a higher end clientele. Yes. They were trying to, yeah, they were looking for people with money. Yes. And and they succeeded in that. (laughs) It was the hot spot. Well, and didn't, didn't Brisbee have a, a, um, there, it was a mining town, right? Yes. And so they were kind of the big wigs that would come to town in connection with the mine. They would stay at the hotel. Yes, ma'am. 
Which is kind of crazy because when you think about the miners, that's not a very pleasant job. That's a difficult job, not paid really well. Yeah. And these yeah. And these people would come in and they're staying in a luxurious hotel. Yeah, some definitely some grueling hard work. And we have the uh the mining museum right in front of the hotel too, so guests can easily go there and take a little tour with them too and learn more about the mining and the history of that. And you are currently doing some renovations that are actually kind of taking the hotel back to its former glory. Like a lot of yeah. hotels in the 70s, 60s, 70s, they kind of modernized it, but that look mm-hmm. that look is not modern anymore. No, definitely not. Um, so, yes. So we're right now, it's actually so many projects going on right now, but um, on each floor, the hallways are being the old 70s looking carpet uh, has been ripped up and they're restoring the um, original wood flooring on each floor in the hallways um, and also raising the ceilings room by room to the original ceilings um, in the rooms because they used to have the t- the, the really beautiful tall ceilings. And, um, you know, now and then they were lo- lowered. So we're trying to restore those original ceilings and putting beautiful antique chandeliers um, oh, in, on each ceiling as well. That's what's really cool about looking at photos of the hotel, what it looks like now. It really does look like a step back in time. Because like yeah, there's I mean, a saloon. The whole town is a step back in time, really. You go through the tunnel and it's like, you know, you're in a different era almost. It's really beautiful. Tell me a little bit about this city because it's a really, it's a really unique city. What can I say? Bisbee is, is definitely has um, that old timey charm. Um, we have Main Street with all of our shops and different eclectic little things to look at there. Um, and then we have different tours. Like I mentioned, the mining tour. That's a really cool one. Uh, We have Bisbee ghost tours and different things like that. But the Copper Queen is not the only haunted, I'm using air quotes, haunted building in Bisbee. Yes. So um, definitely we we have a lot of different buildings that people like to kind of explore and have. I mean, there's just all kinds of stories around town of different hauntings and everybody has different experiences to tell, like... um, even, uh, I forget the name of the shop, but it, they, they sell olive oil. But um, I went and talked to the gentleman in there, and he had just all kinds of stories of, about um, a woman's spirit that always messes with his music and just all different kinds of things. And then we have another um, a spirit that a lot of people say they see down in the gulch that's sort of like a man in black. And a lot of people kind of describe seeing a similar uh, figure. Now, when you started working at the hotel, well, number one, how long have you worked at the hotel? So I've been coming to Bisbee off and on for like seven or eight years. Um, My family owns the hotel, actually. So I've been coming and visiting for a long time, but I've only officially been here um, in the position I'm in for a year. So when did your family purchase the hotel? I want to say like seven or eight years ago. Okay. Yeah. Well, so that's been a big project then. So it's your own family who's doing all these renovations. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's part of where, that's where my passion comes from. You know, it's like a second home to me. When they purchased the hotel, did they hear or you hear rumors of hauntings or did you just kind of think it's going to go with the territory is a very old hotel? Um, God, it's hard to say. I mean, it really just speaks for itself when you walk in. I mean, I think I just, I've always been very like uh, sensitive to that kind of stuff. So yeah, I'd say that it kind of overtakes you when you walk in and every room has a different feel too. Like, I mean, really like some just feel like heavy, almost like walking into a a crowded room of people. You can just feel that there's like 
energy around you, for lack of a better word. And then some rooms feel very light and airy and, you know, every room kind of has a different feel. But um, yeah, I'd say it really, you know, I always encourage people that even if you don't necessarily believe in spirits or things of that nature, just to come and take it in for yourself and just see how you feel um, in the building itself, whether that's due to just the rich history there or something more. Um, and I think when, when I did go there the first time, I did hear a couple of ghost stories after we'd already gotten settled in the room. And I was like, yeah, this place is definitely haunted. And then it was confirmed to me that, yes, it is. And just looking at some of the pictures of the hotel, it's just gorgeous. Like you have a saloon in there that looks like an old saloon. Yes, it is um, an old saloon, an original part of the building. And uh, when um, we have a John Wayne room, and that's on the second floor. And John Wayne, that was his favorite room because it's closest to the stairs that lead to the bar, kind of. So, you know, he could easily go to the saloon. <laughs> from his room and he actually uh threw a gentleman in a bar fight threw him through the windows of that saloon (laughs) no way yeah i love that one because uh you know when i take people around the hotel and we go in the saloon and i tell them the story you can just picture it you know you can totally picture it in there please tell me that john wayne stepped up and paid for the damages (laughs) Oh my money. gosh! You know, I don't know, <laughs> but probably because he he stayed quite often, and that was that was his favorite room there. So, and there have been a lot of famous people who have stayed in the hotel over the years. Yeah, totally, absolutely. I mean, just a very wide variety of people, and you know, a few that we definitely have rooms dedicated to and named after. And with your family buying the hotel, did they? Was it kind of like they just wanted to buy a hotel? Or maybe they had gone to this hotel and just fell in love with it? A little bit of both. Um, My mom was looking for a hotel. And when she came and visited this one, she just, I mean, she just knew right away. She was like, this is what we're doing. And is she a sensitive as well? She is, but she sort of, I think she doesn't embrace it as much as I do. But she's sort of like, you know, oh, yeah, the ghosts are my friends. And she's she's very comfortable. <laughs> she's definitely very comfortable with it. I've talked to people who have gone into a building and they knew immediately. It was like the, the building was talking to them. You need to buy this building. It's almost like your mom was kind of drawn to it, maybe. it's She's like definitely connected to it. I mean, I feel connected to the place, too. And, you know, part of it is how much we really pour into it with renovating. And I don't think, I don't think a lot of people maybe realize, um, I know a lot of people do, they come and stay and they, you know, they, you, you can see it on their faces. They walk in and they're like, wow, you know what I mean? They just take it all in and they're excited to learn about the history. And then, you know, I guess with any type of hotel business, you always have guests that, maybe just don't really understand that you you're basically paying to stay in a in a um, museum you know mm-hmm. like it is a very old building and maybe they're expecting something a, a bit newer but um it can be frustrating though to hear you know things like oh they need they're not even working on the place or this part is worn down or this part needs work and it's like trust me I'm getting to it you know <laughs> I, it's, I dedicate all my time to like you know, you should see I have lists and things that need to be touched up or maybe repaired. And, you know, it's a, it is a very, very old building. And there's a lot of upkeep on top of the major repairs. And that's just ongoing. That building is 120 plus years old. And yeah, but it's, it's just not good bones. Yeah. And so <laughs> that's just something that comes with it. And I think that's the charm of it. I love walking into a hotel like that that just takes you back. You just feel the history just when you walk in. And I just, I find, I find the hotels like that to be really special. So I really appreciate what you're doing with it. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for that. And you'll, you'll have to come see it yourself someday. Oh, I would love it. And it's a pretty good size hotel. It's like three, is it two or three stories? It's four. And I, I think we might have one room. Uh, under renovation right now. So I think it's 
48 rooms open right now. In this entire time, since 1902, was that when it opened, to now, yes. it has been a hotel and has been operating as a hotel this whole time. A lot of times we talk about buildings that were a hotel for a while, a sanatorium for a while, a hospital for a while, a nursing home, but this has only been a hotel. Yes, hotel, uh, hotel, saloon, and restaurant. I love the saloon part. That, that yeah, our makes... restaurant's been completely remodeled to the um, the the pillars in the in our restaurant have been stripped of its um, paint and restored to its original wood, and it's it's really beautiful in there. So, since you are sensitive. And I'm going to guess you kind of picked up on some paranormal stuff pretty soon after you started there or after your family bought it. What Was there anything that happened to you personally that really caught your attention right off the bat? Oh, yes. I could, <laughs> I could go on and on, honestly. Um, I, I conduct uh, ghost tours within the hotel. Right now, just like private tours for you know, uh, groups upon request and things like that. But yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't even know where to start because I feel like i myself have stayed in almost every room and, um, you know, I have a lot of stories. I would say one thing is that people often say when they speak about the hotel that there are three ghosts. So we have like the three kind of most famous entities of the hotel and that's billy julia lowell and the smoking man and while i do agree they're there i think that there are a lot more spirits than just three there Mm -hmm. i think that a lot of the spirits uh, or energies pass through rooms and kind of travel around so you kind of never know if maybe you're going to stay and feel nothing or maybe something passes through and you see something. Um, We have ghost logs at the front desk that chronicles, oh, I don't even know how far back, but it's a whole stack of books at our front desk that any guest is welcome to write in their own experiences and also take a look at and read. And that's all stories that of things that people have seen during their stay. I would love to look at that. That would be fascinating. So they started that quite a while ago. Yeah, I don't even know how far back because I I only got one book in um, when I was reading them. So I, there is a whole stack there. And then I know I know they also made a shortened version, a book of it. And I believe that's called Spirits of Copper Queen Hotel. You need to sell that book there. I know we used to. I just need to get some more up there. Because that would be so interesting as a guest to pick up that book. After you've stayed there and perhaps maybe you wrote in the journal yourself. Yes, I I do. I love reading people's stories and things, especially when they pertain to specific rooms that I feel are more haunted. So um, like I was saying, the, the, the three main ghosts that people talk about, the rooms that are dedicated to them are, I'd say, more like more there's a more like permanent energy in there than how I was saying the other ghosts kind of travel through and maybe there's just spurts of energy in different rooms because of all the history and things that have happened there and people that have passed there. Um, But there are definitely those few rooms that have a much, much heavier haunted feel. Let's talk about Um, Julia. So Julia Lowell, am am I saying that correctly? Yes. And she's one of the, more well-known spirits that is claimed to be there. What do you know about her? Yeah, so um, she was a prostitute and actually, I believe, an old owner's daughter, too. And she was put up in that room. um, And that room on the third floor is right by the back door. And so she was in that room so that her uh, gentleman suitors could easily, you know, come in and out through the back. And the story goes that she fell in love with one and he did not reciprocate her love. And heartbroken, she hung herself in the rafters right outside of the room. It's tragic. A lot of people say they feel different things in there. I've, I've heard a lot of 
people say they feel their feet tickled at night or some people feel sort of safe and protected and some people feel the opposite. Some people feel like maybe she's being hostile towards them. Could it be sometimes she's more hostile to women and maybe certain men that remind her of? Yes. Yes. That's what they say that um, more towards women, but um, and then maybe some men. But when I stayed in that room, I only stayed in that room one time. I woke up feeling very safe and protected. I don't I mean, it was I felt like warm and at home and I felt very peaceful there. And I I did have had another psychic medium tell me that they think that her spirit is attached to me. So I don't know about that. But (laughs) and I'd wonder, too, because you are working at the hotel and you're trying to improve the hotel and keep the hotel going. Obviously she loves the hotel. So maybe there's a respect there. Yeah, it could be. I I like to think about it like that. Um, You know, when I'm working around the hotel, I I like to feel like the the ghosts are my friends. (laughs) Now, I don't know how I would feel if somebody told me that a spirit was attached to me. I'm not sure how I'd feel about that. It would kind of, I guess, depend on who it is. But I wouldn't want them to go home with me. It's one thing if you're going to attach at work and then when I go home. So when you go home. Yeah, I never sense her here at home. Um, That's good. You know, I sometimes I kind of turn it off, too, because I'm trying to get work done. So I don't I don't personally feel like there is anything specifically attached to me. But, um, you know, that's what I was told once. It was actually uh, when I worked when I uh, worked with Patty Negri from from Ghost Adventures. We did a seance and a ghost hunt. And that was a lot of fun. I learned so much from her. She's she's really a wonderful, special person. That would be really interesting to have that kind of experience, especially with someone like her and where you're, this is, you are invested. This is your family's business. Yes. So that would be really interesting to see it in a whole different light. light like yeah. That. She really helped me kind of embrace, you know, just what I was like already naturally feeling around me because for me, like, I feel like I'm just me. Like I wouldn't really call myself a psychic or anything. I mean, I, I, you know, I guess I have psychic like abilities. It's just weird for me because I, you know, to me, I'm just me. I've always been this way. You know, I've just been sensitive to those types of things, but um, she's kind of opened my eyes a little bit up to like embracing that side more. Do you get a lot of reports from Julia's room of hauntings? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think really like the, the feet tickling. Oh, and then little soft whispers in the ear. And then a lot of people have said they felt like uh, a woman's touch stroked the side of their face as well. Ooh, I don't know how I'd feel about that. I know. Yeah, we recently had um, also, uh, what's this? It's a Hulu show, a new show on Hulu uh, called Living for the Dead. And the producers, uh, it was by the producers of Queer Eye. And it's... um queer ghost hunters and they came to the hotel and um one of the psychic mediums on that show uh specifically connected with julia and you can watch the episode it's episode two and she goes into detail about how like she just sort of takes on julia's emotions and it's actually kind of it's kind of heartwarming oh i need to watch that that would be really interesting yeah it's really interesting now what about the young boy Billy yes so Billy Billy is sort of uh right up the the side stairs there from Julia's room he's on the fourth floor and Billy was the little boy who whose mother was a housekeeper and that was one of his favorite rooms to play in and he unfortunately drowned nearby in the San Pedro River although some reports say that he drowned actually in the bathtub of that room So a little bit mixed there, but we can definitely all agree that he drowned. And a lot of psychics have said when going into that room, um, Patty specifically too, she, she didn't do research beforehand or anything because she likes to just take it in as she goes, you know, and I try to not tell people details either. I try to let people feel it for themselves. Like 
tell me what you're feeling physically and emotionally when you walk into a room when we're doing、uh, ghost hunts. And people a lot of times feel like they can't breathe or like there's something in their lung. I would say he's a very playful and friendly spirit.、Um, other people have said that they feel a darker entity in that room. Do you think that the darker entity would be Billy, or do you think it would be someone else who is so, in the room with him? Yeah, that's a good question.、Um, so I, I personally feel like there are two. I mean, if you can say it like that, kind of like. I feel like there's. I feel like Billy is there, and that there is a darker entity that either passes through multiple rooms or takes a liking to that room. I'm not really sure.、Um, people have said、uh, that they think that it's、um, a darker entity that、um, uses Billy as a disguise, and that he's、oh. not really a boy spirit. I, I, but I kind of disagree with that. I don't know what it is. It's that's just how I feel when I go in the room. I feel like there is a childlike spirit there,、um, and I have spent the night in that room as well、um, for two nights, two or three nights. And I know that the first night I woke up to hearing what sounded like a little kid running back and forth and back and forth, like almost like at the foot of the bed. Like across the room, and you know how kids will do that—you know, run, run one way, and then run the other way,、right. run the other way. You know what I mean? So it really sounded like that, and it was loud enough to where it woke me up because it sounded like someone was running around in the room with me. And then the、uh, the second night I was in there, it woke me up again. I don't know about the same time, one thirty or two thirty in the morning. And that time I got out of bed and I like whipped the door open to see, okay. Is there a kid running in the hallway here? You know, and of course there was there was no one there, and there was actually no one on that floor that night. So there's no way there's a kid running around, but yet that's what you're、no. hearing. No, there's just no way because I I got up and I I was laying you know with my eyes open hearing the running and open the door and there's no kid there. So I I would have. If for some reason it was a kid that was staying somewhere else in the hotel, I would have heard him running around the corner or down the stairs, or you know, it's just not possible. And I also left.、Uh, sometimes people leave like little toys. Little his his room is decorated with like little toys and a, a big car, like a car toy kind of that you know a kid could sit in. And、um, these people leave him candies and stuff. So I put little candies on the other side of, because there's two beds in that room. So the other side of the other bed, I put candies. And then in the morning,、um, the candies were like dragged under the bed. No way. Yeah. And you're in the room by yourself, or you think you're in the room by yourself? Yeah, but I'm not by myself. Right. I'm with Billy. Right. And he likes the company. And he、so、obviously I, appreciated the candy because he moved it. Yeah, I, I,、um, you know, when I do ghost hunts and stuff, I ask him, "How are you doing?" and "What would you like more of?" Do you, you know, I use、um, the lighting rods for、um, communicating with spirits, and we'll ask him questions like, "What would you like? This kind of candy or this kind?" or, you know, just different little things like that. And he's very、uh, talkative. He's very he communicates a lot. Um, he, I think he likes people and companies. Do you think the dark energy in there would that have, or could it have anything to do with the older man, the ghost with the top hat and the black cape? Yes. And that wraps up part one of our conversation about the Copper Queen Hotel in Bisbee, Arizona. If you'd like information on staying at the hotel or paranormal investigations, contact Jenna Lampinen. You can email her at jenna at copperqueen dot com. If you'd like access to all of our episodes, including the archive and advance episodes, you'll get everything commercial free. Then become a gravekeeper. Sign up on Apple Podcasts where you can try it for three days free, or go to Patreon.com/slash/TheGraveTalks. I'm Carol Hughes, and for all of us here at The Grave Talks, thank you for listening. <laughs>